You're watching Life Report. Pro-life talk, real world answers. Life Report trains people to more effectively defend their pro-life beliefs while honestly examining the strengths and weaknesses of both sides. We're the show other pro-lifers may have warned you about. This is Life Report. I have to say, there's nothing quite like sitting in the studio, getting ready to record, and listening to My Fair Lady songs <laughs> being sung by both Liz and Producer Grace. Because Producer Grace is awesome. Nor is there anything like having a debate over which is better, tea or coffee. That was not the debate. I prefer coffee What's to the tea. Debate? The debate was... I said, Josh, do you like tea? Because I didn't know if you were, you know, you like tea. Right. No. You no. just don't like it at all. And no. then Trent was like, no. I don't like tea either. I don't like tea. I was like, I'm an equal opportunity hot beverage drinker. And I said tea is a lady's drink. And it is. Beer is and a guy's drink. And I said, exactly. look at history. Yeah, women sit around on the porch or the veranda for a spot of tea. Guys don't get around for a spot of beer. They go to the tavern for beer. Why do you think that exactly. there was a meal at 4 o'clock called tea that everyone ate? It was the only time for guys at that point to be even be able to see women at all. So you make sacrifices, you do what you can. <laughs> I well think this tea done. Was stronger we do something better. similar today. It's called sitting through Dancing through with the Stars. And so, <laughs> Except that I don't watch Dancing I with like the Stars. It. Okay. Well, you've got, but you have yourself a unique man that can tailor himself to your unique taste. So unless Kyle likes Dancing with the Stars. No, actually, neither one of them would be funny. He's wet. Okay. Well, then there you go. He's wet. There you go. Compatibility. Okay, welcome to Life Report. Um, <laughs> Trent Horn is back here with, with Justice for All. Last show for, I mean, a while. That, that and he'll getting be here. too it's familiar. Really I mean, sad. He, he's, I know. he's starting picking fights with Liz. For a month now, they're like, where's Kyle? They've changed <laughs> everything. What is going on here? And um, but, but real quick, before we get into uh, listener mail, I want to talk with Trent about something because he wrote an article recently, which mm. is good. Um, uh, is this one of those that we can actually publish and post a link to yet? Or We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see. But I can direct you to a few different people uh, who have okay, written fine. well on this. So uh, every once in a while on campuses, we're talking with pro-choice people, mm-hmm. and we get the comment that they, 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 they agree that the unborn embryo, this this entity, is biologically alive, mm-hmm. but they don't believe it's an actual organism in the way that we talk about. And you wrote a really good article mm-hmm. that at least I've been able to read that addresses that. And so can you just briefly describe for our listeners what exactly is an organism and how can we show that human embryos are organisms? If I had to describe an organism, I'd say an organism is an individual member of a species, regardless of whatever kingdom that that species is a member of, whether it's bacteria or fungi, animals, plants, an individual member of that species. And we Mm -hmm. can identify that individual member because we see um, a biological unit that's a system of parts that work together for the greater good of the whole on a self-directed path of development. Hmm. So different than maybe, you know, a tumor or cancer cells, that's just uncontrolled growth. Um, They're actually interrelated parts working together for the good of the whole, developing new features on a path of development that it it is guiding, that the being is guiding on its own to a certain extent. Hmm. And it has to be something with living components because machines have interrelated parts that work together, but they're not, uh, they don't have the properties of life. They don't have growth, Hmm. they don't have homeostasis. So just, yeah, parts that work together for the good of the whole, that is what I would probably define as an organism. And okay. all human fetuses and embryos easily fit that description. So okay. I, feel, I find it's mostly ignorance of biology that right. someone's going to say that a fetus is not an organism. When, when, when they say it's like cancer, it's probably because they don't understand a lot about cancer and, and they think that its growth is the same the way an embryo grows, but it's not. It's completely different is what you're saying. Or they're purposefully trying to dehumanize the unborn. Eh, that happens You get that same thing when, it's, it's when people though. say it's a parasite or something. They're That's to... a little, yeah, it's probably a little bit closer to, right. to that. Now, sometimes people say, well, an organism has to be a separate independent entity mm-hmm. is that true or not to be an organism yeah that's false okay and there's an easy way to demonstrate that some people say I've heard this on campus before like well mm-hmm. it's not an organism because they'll cite some obscure definition and say an organism is a separate being or it has to have a separate oh, okay. existence right. and since the unborn can't live without its mother well then it's not an organism it's just a part of her body but that's just simply false and 
Uh, what I write in the article is that to show that it's false, an right. old objection that pro-choice arguers use will now come back to haunt them. Hmm. And that is the objection that the fetus is a parasite. Mm. Oh, because the definition right. of a parasite is an organism that draws its nutrients from another organism. Mm -hmm. So a parasite right. is a type of organism. Now, other pro-lifers have argue that the fetus is not a parasite like we commonly know them, right. but we won't need that right now. Right. Simply, if a parasite is an organism, and this pro-choicer says that, right. then it is. And the question we have to ask is, well, what kind of organism is it? It has right. human parents. Right. Then we come to an interesting problem. So I would say, so you're saying that a human organism or a human being, you're calling them a parasite. Right. I don't like that. That kind of reminds me of other times mm -hmm. in history, like when Nazi Germany, we said the Jew they said the Jews were parasites. Right. right. Do you want to be in that camp of calling humans parasites or waste or garbage? I don't. No, I was right. just recently I think it was under Live Action's blog, I'd written an article and there was there was a, a pro choice person commenting and we, we went back mm -hmm. and forth. I think it, it was there. I know this happened. I just don't if, if this was a specific time. I know I've heard this before, certainly under my YouTube videos. Um, right. where all kinds of comments happen. <laughs> um, but this was rather new. Like I think this was one of the first times I had heard this and this was like recently in the last year. They were saying that now we know that because we usually talk about how the embryo is self developing, it develops from right. within, from, from, from within itself. Right. There's saying, well, no, it's not really developing from within itself because it, the mother's RNA is actually helping to develop it. And so can you kind of expand on, on what they mean by that and then what should our mm -hmm. response be? Right. I'm going to do my best here, but I'm actually kind of terrified because my girlfriend is very smart and studies biology, <laughs> biology <laughs> and chemistry. And she's probably going to watch and wait for me to make some mistake on one of these points. And so. this is going to nice. be like, Trent, you, what's wrong with you? Yeah, basically. So oh, here's really the best that I'll go. Uh, this objection, and this reminds me of an objection Will Salatin made in, in his critique of Robert George and Christopher Tollison's book, Embryo, A Defense of Human Life. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that, um, so we have sperm and ovum, they come together to right. form the embryo. Yep. Um, in the embryo, though, you have the DNA, which is a combination of the mother and father's uh, nucleotides their, from their gametes. Right. But right. in the ovum, you actually have some RNA, which is, you know, the cousin of DNA. They're very similar. RNA is transcripted from DNA, it's used for protein synthesis. So in the ovum itself, you have messenger RNA or maternal messenger RNA. Mm -hmm. And the argument goes that, well, up until the eight celled stage of development, so once it gets to eight cells, during that time, some people argue the genes in the embryo are turned off, that it's the mRNA that's guiding the development up to the eight cells and then the embryo takes over basically. And I'm not utterly, I'm not <laughs> totally convinced by that. And so, I mean, this is definitely we're getting a bit more technical here. Right. But yeah. if I had to respond, I would say, well, one, um, there is some empirical evidence that that's not true. In Robert George's book, he deals with this question. He says, well, we've noticed um, there appears to be evidence of communication between the blastomeres, which are the individual cells in the eight-celled organism, wow. even at the two-celled stage, which would show that they're dividing or at least cooperating with the mRNA. Okay. I would say that it's possible that, yeah, maybe the mRNA could be guiding the development, but the embryo is still a unified being that's right. growing that has the ability to cooperate with the mRNA. Okay. So the fact that it can do that and the eight cells don't just split off into a bunch of other embryos right. show there's a kind of unity there. Right. And so mm -hmm. I think that that's something important to look at. There's what? also, well, one other thing, I guess, well, oh, no, Liz, I've been rambling. What oh, no, I, I was just thinking, is there any easy way for someone like me who doesn't understand necessarily all the different mm -hmm. concepts of RNA and DNA coming to, is, if somebody brings up some kind of an objection like that, mm -hmm. is there an easy way for me to still prove that the unborn is a whole unique organism? So you're basically mm -hmm. asking Trent, who just gave the dumbed down version that his girlfriend is going to hate, to dumb it down even more. That didn't That's sound dumbed down my. enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, no, I understand what you right. mean. It's Now, one thing is interesting, I mean, for, for a lay person to bring up what's somewhat of a complicated objection, right? and then to think that, oh, I need to give them a, a simple response for them to understand, it's like, hey, you open the complicated can of worms, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to do the best I can to answer. <laughs> right, yeah. Right. But I think the core principles I try to break it down are, isn't it possible that, you know, we have these collection of cells that are cooperating with the mRNA. That's an ability okay. they have as a collection. And in order to all work together for that, they have to be unified by something. Another reason to doubt this, I think Robert George has said this, 
is that in embryos that do not have a nucleus but only the RNA, mm -hmm. uh, cell division does not take place or cleavage. Okay. So, so the RNA, the mRNA doesn't do, won't do the whole thing. Now, some people argue, well, we've seen this in animal experiments with frog embryos that cleavage can take place without mm -hmm. a nucleus, mm -hmm. but we've never seen it in humans. And I think that human embryos are just different. For example, mm -hmm. we've never... Some people will say, oh, you know, an ovum, it's basically a human being. We've, we've got 47 vertebrate species that, you know, we've seen an unfertilized egg become a mature member of that species. And I say, well, I think human beings, they're different. <laughs> Empirically, why should I believe they're like right. those vertebrates? Because we've mm. never had an experience of an unfertilized ovum ever being documented, developing into a full member of our species. Right. Right. Except for once. There is yeah, some, there is thinking, some research with something about going about in Israel, actually, a while that. back, that sperm was not needed, but the ovum did become uh, a human being right. about 2,000 mm -hmm. years ago. So <laughs> okay. that would be our little in-joke there. But yeah. I, would just, I would just say, yeah, that, uh, that the right. mRNA cooperates with the embryo, that it's okay. not just a collection of cells that are unrelated. It makes more sense to say it's a unified being up to the eight cell point. Where all the parts are working together for the mm -hmm. good of the whole. Right, and they're working together by cooperating with the mRNA that's there. I mean, Maureen Kondik, who is a embryo pro-life embryologist, says that, I mean, really, the mRNA, it's not part of the mother acting from a distance externally. It's within the embryo itself. Okay. It's a part of the whole package. Yeah. So this is all going on in the embryo, not within the woman's body. It's within the inner cell mass. Okay. So I would just put it that way. And then the final cap would just be, all right, let's find common ground. Would you at least say the embryo is a person from the eight-celled stage on? Right. I mean, it might not right. get you for embryonic stem cell research, right. Joss, but at least for everything else. Right. It's, usually it's in it's embryo a good point stem cell, at. they're doing blastocysts when they've already got, what, 150 cells usually, yeah. though, right? So, I mean, you very rarely, are they, I think, are they doing embryo stem cell when it's only an eight-cell embryo. Anyway, okay, so to sum up, one, sum, one summary sentence. If the person says the embryo is not an organism... It's working together. It's a bunch of parts working together as a self-directed whole mm -hmm. towards the goal of becoming a mature member of our species. And okay. cancer cells, sperm and egg, they don't do that. Only organisms like embryo and fetuses. And I would just ask them, an embryo and fetus is not an organism? Yeah, that's right. Can you define the words for me? If you go uh, to any dictionary definition of embryo right. or fetus, mm. it will refer to an yep. organism. Yep at a particular stage in their development. Yep, and that's that the myself. final Trump, I would say. Okay, okay. Good, good. Very well. Good job, Trent. Okay, listener mail. Yay. This is a good one. Yay. There's no All way right. we're going to do more than one listener mail today because this is a big topic right. and we haven't right. really hit it on this show. This is from Ritz. He says, Hi, Josh. Why do you think the area of in vitro fertilization is so often ignored by the pro-life movement? Hmm. Even when the topic of embryonic stem cell research is discussed, one rarely hears about hmm. the somewhat related tragic discussion of countless embryos through in vitro fertilization. The morning, dr the morning drive radio show I listen to on my commute includes a lesbian w woman, a lesbian woman, and she's been discussing how her eggs were recently harvested for a future implantation into her partner. One of the things she said was that rather than freezing her eggs, it turned out that since frozen embryos are much more resilient than frozen eggs, they went ahead and had all seven of her harvested eggs fertilized. However, mm. however many of these that take and begin mm. the process of growth or mitosis are being frozen for later. The unstated assumption was that if four or five of these eggs became viable embryos, they're not going to implant all of them. Rather, the excess embryos will, will be discarded. The radio show's co-hosts were all saying what a great thing this was while I was just cringing at how horrible it all is. Mm. I used the advanced search feature on your site but couldn't find any mention of IVF in the vein of your pro-life gauntlet. <laughs> what should pro-lifers be doing about mm. this and why? Mm. That's so such an interesting topic because um, we do talk a lot more about embryonic stem cell research because there's not a lot, of, there's, well, out of embryonic stem cell research right now, there's no good coming out of it. Right. You're looking at, you know, the possibility of good, but other very viable options like adult stem cells and right. now turning adult stem cells back into right. pluripotent cells so that we can do the same thing. Right. So we don't need that destruction of human life. But right. now you have that emotional pull of some of us maybe even knowing people who have gone through in vitro fertilization and say, you know, it gave me my child. Right. I was able to have. Right. And it, it's such an emotional per pull. And you could say, as long as you create the human and put it into the mother and it lives, that it's a good thing. But then how do you tackle yeah. the obvious destruction of human life? It's